Chapter 3 The Story of the Silk Cotton Tree The seed was no bigger than the nail on Deepa's little finger. It was as hard as a nutshell. I'll plant it and a flower will grow from it, Deepa said to herself. She fetched a flower pot and planted the seed. She watched it every day. One day, a little shoot sprang up. Her plant was no bigger than her little finger. No one knew what it was. We'll have to wait until it flowers, said Deepa's mother. The little plant grew and grew. It grew very tall. We'll have to measure ourselves to see who is bigger, said Deepa of the baby tree as she set off for school for the first time. By summer, the tree had grown much taller than her. It almost filled the sitting room. I wonder what kind of a monster it is, said mother. So she borrowed a book on plants, buried her nose in it, and finally called out. Here we are. It is a simul, also called silk cotton, an enormous tree. It'll bring the whole house down. Father dashed off to the shed to get his axe. No! shrieked Deepa. If you chop its top off, it will die. Father dear, please! But Grandfather supported her. Let her plant it in the garden. It will be all right there. No other tree attracts birds the way a silk cotton does. You will not only have a big tree... But an aviary too. So they planted it out in the garden. Now you can measure yourself against the house, said Deepa to her tree. She got a ladder and make a mark on the wall by the top of the tree. After that, the tree was measured against the house every five years. In those years, the tree grew tall and stately. The branches took off in worlds. Short, Thick bristles grew out of them. The shapely leaves provided shade to Deepa and her friends on many a summer afternoon. Between January and March, when the tree shed all its leaves, it bore beautiful red flowers that gave their garden an enchanting look. Deepa felt so proud of her tree. She often caressed its silvery, grey, white bark. Then Deepa became a mother herself. She had two children. They loved the tree just as she had done. They loved its bright red flowers. They loved to collect the little balls of cotton that floated down like snow from its pods. What they loved most was the constant chatter of birds when the tree was in bloom. Bulbuls, menas, babblers, parakeets and flower peckers squabbled and jostled for a sip of the delicious nectar. Once, the children had even spotted an oriole. The yellow bird with jet black wings looked spectacular amidst the dark crimson flowers. Many years passed. Now the tree was six feet tall. One day, Deepa, now grey-haired and old, was sitting under the seamol's shade, knitting a muffler for her grandson. Gotham, when the young lad came running back from his friend's house. Oh, Granny, he said excitedly. What a good thing it is to have such a big tree standing guard over our house. We can see our house from a distance and it's easy to find our way home. Really? said Grandmother, her eyes gleaming with pride. And our teacher says every part of a semel tree is useful. It's bark and gum and flowers. Gotham gushed. The gum heals wounds. The bark is used for making match sticks. The wood is used to make toys and pencils and canoes. Just imagine, I've got such a great friend. Grandmother said to him, once upon a time, the tree was no bigger than the nail on your little finger. I didn't know then that I was planting a friend for you.